Hello and welcome to this Let's Play of Sid Meier's Civilization VI on release day with Peter the Great of Russia, with your host as always, Madry Bread. I just finished playing my first full playthrough of this game as Germany off screen, so I've gotten used to the game a little bit. Uh, it's awesome. I really, really like this game so far. Gonna be playing it as Peter the Great of Russia because that's the next most interesting civilization to me that I wanted to save for on screen. We're going to be on King difficulty. Normally in Civilization V, I actually play Immortal difficulty, but I should probably lower the difficulty a bit because I'm still very new to Civilization VI and its mechanics, so we're going on King today, and I'll be working my way up through the difficulties. Over the course of uploading this on the channel, I'll also be live streaming this every once in a while on my Hitbox TV page in the description. Basically, Russia is a team all about mass expanding, having a strong religious game, and catching up in technology through the use of trade routes. Without further ado, let's get started. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest, from this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Embrace the chill winds of the motherland, Tsar Peter. Your fascination with science and culture is a gift, and you will learn much from your grand embassies to foreign lands. Under your rule, Russia will surely flourish and spread, absorbing all that lies around it, perhaps creating the greatest land empire seen on this earth. All right, so we receive extra science or culture from trade routes to civilizations more advanced than us. So it helps incentivize maybe taking a back step for a little while on science and culture and catching up, which actually makes Russia a very appealing civilization for high difficulties where the AI starts with a very large lead over you. We get extra territory upon founding cities, so initial huge borders. As we know from Civilization V with the Chishone, that's very powerful. Extra faith and production from Tundra, so we can make use of that garbage land that no one else wants. Cossack unique unit, I'll have to look in to see if they're as good as they were in the previous two games. And the Lavra is our unique district, which is an extra good version of the Holy Site district. So, um, because it's our unique one, we can build it in every city, and at half the usual production cost, making our religious game very strong. <sighs> and we're in. It already feels so good. Alright, so we can see we're going to get a little bit of Tundra in the future here, but not much. Which is fine, Tundra is still not the most appealing tile in the world. And let's go ahead and turn on Show Yield Icons and start our empire. Alright, so we're on a coast, so right away we start with a Eureka for sailing. So what a Eureka is, let's open up the research tree here. Every technology in the game, aside from the starting three here, have a Eureka, which is a special condition that boosts your technology. It shaves off half the turns you require for that technology if you do it. So this got boosted, and we lost half the turns on it just for having to found a city on the coast. Now, you don't need a city to be directly on the coast anymore to be able to build ships. You can actually just have it near the coast, as long as you build a harbor district. But still, on the coast can be nice. So right away, our science is abysmal right off the start. I tend to like to go with my first technology based on what's around me. So we have furs there, with this, which is a luxury, and all it requires is animal husbandry nowadays. So that tells me we probably want to start with animal husbandry. We start with our warrior to scale. We have St. Petersburg as our capital. So we've got quick movement turned on right now to help speed up the turns. We have quick combat turned off just because I haven't seen all the combat animations yet, and I'm sure you haven't either since the game just came out. So I thought people might want to see that. So normally I'd like to start with a monument or a scout, usually a scout, but with how narrow this land is, I think I might actually want to do a builder first to get things up and running in St. Petersburg with all of the land that we have, the extra land that we have, then get a scout and maybe leave a monument for even after that, despite how culture is basically another kind of science in this game. Because we can catch up on, on our culture a little bit later through trade routes. Because we're Russia, that's what we're good at. So I'm actually going to go with a builder, despite the game advising against it. 
So Peter the Great is actually a historical figure that I know quite a bit about because Civilization IV also had him and it sparked an interest in him, so I researched him a lot. He is, um, insane. Okay, so there's a barbarian encampment there. They're spearmen, which we don't have yet. And if they send out a scout and figure out where St. Petersburg is and get back alive, they'll actually send a raiding party to St. Petersburg, which is scary. Unlike Civilization V, oh, there's a goodie hut there. Unlike Civilization V, our city cannot actually defend itself by default. It needs walls to be able to defend itself or a unit. Here we go. So we got a free Eureka for finding that. It was on irrigation, which is pretty good. Um, irrigation is kind of like Civilization's fought Civilization V's calendar. It's the uh, same basic idea. It's mostly just to get some unit upgrades. Okay, we've got interesting lay of the land here. It's very rough. We have a lot of quarries we can make up there for a high production city. I also wouldn't mind having a city up here for science because there are a lot of mountains. And that'll give us adjacency bonus, which I'll talk about more when we get to it. And we have our first builder. We have animal husbandry in two turns, so let's just get him there ahead of time. And Mansion Citizens will lock that tile. And we have a population of two. Oh, our other one's down there. That is a lot of production, which I like, but I tend to like to focus on food early on. That'll get us a five turn growth, so let's do that. I'm still getting used to the layout of everything a little bit. Okay. We're gonna get a scout so that we can bring our warrior back home, because those barbarians are going to be an issue. And I'd like our uh, warrior to be over here and ready. So we'll skip a turn there on our builder. If there are no dogs in heaven, then when I die, I want to go where they went. So yeah, Sean Bean is the tech quote guy for this game. It's pretty awesome. Then again, Civilization's always had great tech quote people. From Leonard Nimoy to the guy in Civ 5 who is like 90 years old and I wish I could remember his name, but he's awesome. To Sean Bean! <laughs> I feel like no one ever talks about the Civilization V tech guy just because he isn't a famous name, but he was great at his job. All right, so we get uh, half of a housing for this and we get gold. It's also a luxury, so we do get amenities. So we have plus one amenities there in St. Petersburg. We use a builder charge on it to instantly build it. And I believe we'll have uh, more if we need it later that or we may have already had it again the game has just come out today and amenities are iffy on how how they're explained so i'm actually tempted to go with very early sailing here start exploring by water because it looks like the land is so rough so let's just take a look at our tree again Granary wouldn't hurt because it gets us early housing and early food, so granary is important. And by the way, when you're hovering over things here, don't just hover over the things like what it gives you here. Also hover over the tech itself, because sometimes it will say extra things. Like this says, allows harvesting of wheat and rice, which we have neither of, which is unfortunate. They're great food um, tiles. Mining, less chopping of wood and harvesting of copper. So we will get copper soon. Copper is not a luxury anymore, it's a bonus. Bonus resources are like cattle in the previous game, where it's just a very good tile to work. Crabs are also a bonus, and fish are a bonus, so we actually don't have many luxuries by our capital, but luxuries aren't quite as vital as they were in Sid Meier's Civilization V. So I want to go early astrology, because we get the Lavra, which is our holy sites. We build them much faster, and our city border grows each time a great person is expended in that city. Which is going to be a lot of the course of the game, because Russia in this game is a very let's spam great people through buying them with faith kind of country. Which is absolutely fascinating to me, because it reminds me of Civilization IV, in which Peter the Great was a philosophical and expansive leader. He was all about spamming, um, actually, you know what, I probably want to keep him here. He was all about spamming great people. In fact, he played a lot like um, Abraham Lincoln did in that game, where Abraham Lincoln was philosophical. Um, God, that is a good tile with the faith and everything. Maybe I should be working that one. Well, we grow in one turn. Um, where he was charismatic and philosophical. Units like scouts are unique. Right, so the game is going to tell me advice every once in a while there, because I haven't played, uh, it still thinks I haven't played Civilization VI before, but I'm going to leave those on because um, I'm likely not going to let them play, but I'll use them as a cue point to talk to you guys about new mechanics. Basically, it was telling me that scouts, 
unlike previous Civilization games, uh, scouts don't gain experience through fighting, or although I believe they can. They mostly gain experience through... Um, they mostly gain experience through uh, scouting tiles that you haven't seen before, which is great. Uh, scouts stay useful for basically the entire game. They do get replaced at some point, but that's like late industrial. Okay. Unfortunately, much like my previous match I did just by myself, um, we're in this awkward stage of the game where we don't... In our government. At okay, his best, government. Man is the noblest of all animals. Separated from law and justice, he is the worst. Aristotle. Right, um. I will finish my thought on on screen text because I've already forgotten it because I'm an idiot. But we can see here government. I'm going to explain this to you. We start off as a chiefdom, which is the lowest ranked government, it's just the worst one. And what we're going to do here is we can take one military policy and one economic policy. Now, I was a little bit more, I had a little bit more leniency as Germany, because one of Germany's abilities is they can have two military policies from the start. They have an extra one. Basically, we can, we can slot these in and out, and we can switch them for free every time we have new ones available which is really nice. So double experience for reconnaissance units is really nice, but the way we're boxed in by, by um, barbarians, I think I want discipline, extra combat strength and fighting barbarians, because we want to rapid expand, and that'll mean fighting a lot of barbarians. Urban planning is appealing, extra production in all cities. So is God King, though. Gold in faith in the capital, it doesn't stay good for very long, but we're not going to take it for long. We just want to found our pantheon, so we want it for the faith. And we're going to lock that tile down there because we want that faith production. And until we have mining, we don't really have much to do here with our builder. So we're just going to leave them around. So builders, unlike workers in previous games, um, they don't, they're not like workers where they last forever or unless, unless you kill them. Um, and they can build roads and tile improvements, but they take time. Builders have three charges but they build their tile improvement instantly. It's to incentivize you building them throughout the game when you need them, rather than having a pile of workers waiting around for you. So Code of Laws is finished, that's always the first civic you're going for, and you can see the civics tree here. It is basically another technology tree, which is really interesting. That culture is another type of science. So foreign trade and craftsmanship, uh, improve three tiles, which is probably not going to happen super quick, and discover a second continent, <laughs> which is not going to happen super quick. Foreign trade is very appealing to me because that gets us the trader unit, which is a big part of Russian strategy, but we haven't met anyone yet. Uh, extra gold for trade routes, double production towards ancient and classic era naval units. Now, this was another thing about Peter the Great. Peter the Great believed that uh, a country couldn't be great without a great navy because he idolized countries like France and England, seeing how much more in the future their countries were compared to Russia at the time, he was all but westernization. So he respected a great navy and was a Russian leader who really pushed to get borders to the ocean. Joint war also, establish a joint war against a target civilization. It's where you make an agreement with another civilization that you'll both go to war together against a common foe. I think I'm going to go with craftsmanship early because it leads to strict state workforce, which is very nice. Because that gets us conscription, <laughs> which is great. Early Empire is appealing too, and you get that out of foreign trade. Um, but production towards builders is so valuable to me early on. Because I'm going to have so many tiles to improve that I'm going to need to spam out builders at some point, And that'll help us. So we're going to sleep that unit. There used to be a barbarian encampment there, and now it's gone. Did someone else come by and kill that? No man ever wetted clay and then left it, as if there would be bricks by chance and fortune. Now, this means that either there's another civilization nearby that has military in the area, or there's a city-state nearby. Now, city-states are a lot. Oh. <laughs> Kitty Luna Vava Mukabulan Temuen. 
We just found a lifelong ally. So this is the Congo. The Congo are very interesting in this game. They can't found a religion, but they get extra bonuses from taking other people's religions. If we spread our religion to him, he'll be very happy with us. He'll also be someone to siphon culture and science off of if he catches a, if he gets ahead of us in science and culture, which he probably will, because his country is all about growing very quickly. High population cities, which is good for science. This is interesting. It's an honor to meet you. We'll be friendly with them right off the bat. And we'd love to take a sample of your hospitality. We're being friendly early, and that found us his capital. So he's very nearby. Now, for finding another person, we got a Eureka bonus towards writing. Incense up there. Okay, he, was, he killed that barbarian encampment. Okay, because we're in this area here, I really am not worried about bar bar barbarians if they're not appearing around. So I think I want to just bring this worker to do some fog busting in an area that I want to settle, which might be up here to get the incense. I also wouldn't mind having a city right here uh, for the stone and the crabs. They're just bonus resources, but it's still a good city. This game is a lot more friendly to spamming cities than the previous one. We want to find a natural wonder to get astrology faster because I don't want to rush it too hard. I want the lava and I want it badly but I don't want to cripple myself doing it. So we already have irrigations um, boost done, plantation and hanging gardens. Well, as the clearing of a marsh, which is worth a lot of food, we could clear that marsh and instantly get an enormous boost of food to our capital to get it up and running. In fact, that's the most appealing thing to me right now. Delegation is most welcome. Absolutely. So delegations, um, first of all, makes people like you more because you're opening, you're kind of opening your country up to them. But it also gives us more information on their country. All right, I really don't want them forward settling us and boxing us in. So normally I'd like to have my slinger protect my city because he's a ranged unit but we can't really do that right now. Also, something annoying about where our capital is, it's both good and bad. These are rocky coasts. You can't actually um, do a landing party on that, but I believe it also means you might not be able to do a harbor there. Unless you have a promotion that allows you to scale rocky cliffs. That's a thing you can get. So a granary would be nice to keep the production going, but I think we actually need a settler. So building a settler does not keep your city from growing anymore. However, it does go back to the classic style of it using up a population in your city when you're done making the settler. So I actually want to scout this area a little bit to figure out where's an optimal spot for a city. More incense over there, and we have cattle, which is represented by a milk bottle. Cocoa up there. Okay. I really want to mass settle this area. So he's got a lot of cocoa in his borders. That's good to know. God, this is such a good feeling game. Augusta e Roma Imperator Caesar Traianus Sum. Qui ses? Qua terra patria vocas. And I think we just spotted a lifelong enemy. Trajan. Uh, he's gonna be a problem. Okay, so Rome, just like in every previous game, he spams cities. We wanna be good terms with them. Yes, yeah, so let's exchange information about our capitals. Where are you? Okay, you're a bit farther away, but he spams cities like nobody's business. He's probably the biggest city spammer. He's also very militaristic and very dangerous in early game. So we need to be careful about him. Okay, there's a goodie hut and there's some scouts. So, let's take a look at what we know here. Our access level is none right now. Our espionage is basically non-existent. So he's unfriendly with us. All we know about his agenda is uh, that he likes it when people found religions and bring it to him. So he doesn't like it if we found a religion and then don't bring it to him. Because he wants to accumulate every religion he can. Because the more religions he gets, 
uh, the more religious bonuses he'll have. Which is slightly worrying. Everyone also has a hidden agenda, which is randomized every game, but we can't see that yet. Rome, uh, he tries to include as much territory as possible in his empire. He doesn't like small countries. He'll bully the hell out of small countries and try and take them over. Which is more than slightly concerning. He sent us a trade delegation. Sure. So, he probably won't hate us. At least not based on uh, how he runs his country. Because we will have large borders. Ooh. Wish I'd seen that one coming. We will have large borders, but he might not like us because we'll, we'll settle. Have lived without love. Not one without water. I love that quote. Um, we will be settling cities close to him, probably. We're going to be competing for land. Our neighbors have made a request of us. If we can impress them, I think they will reward us handsomely. Yeah. Okay, so we just found uh, Preslov, which is a militaristic city-state. Yeah, militaristic. So, we're the first ones to meet them, which automatically gave us an envoy with them. Having one envoy means that uh, they give you two production in your capital when producing units. If we get to three, it's, every, it's more per encampment district. Six, even more for encampment districts producing units. And lastly, if you have three more than any other civilization, you become the suzerain. Now, the suzerain bonus is unique to every single city-state, so... You know, every industrial city-state might have the same bonuses, but their suzerain bonus will be different. The one for P Priestlov, your light and heavy cavalry units have extra strength when fighting on hill tiles. That's not super impressive to me. It's a really weirdly specific one. I don't mind being their ally, but it's not something I care a ton about at the moment. It'll be a little nice once we have Cossacks later in the game. It's really not a big deal. They want us to recruit a great scientist. Well, if we look here at all the great scientists, uh, the next great scientist uh, is right here. Classical great scientist. We need 750 faith if we want to buy him out, which is unlikely. Triggers three Euro Eureka moments in classical or medieval. That's not bad. I like that. I got that one in my previous game, and that was quite useful to me. So we're done irrigation, and we're going to immediately remove this marsh. So this might actually overpopulate us. We have three of four citizens. That immediately got us to four of four, but growing is very slow now because we don't have enough room for housing for anything else. But that's fine because we're about to use it up anyway. Uh, so yeah, let's not focus on that tile anymore because it's not that great anymore. We can focus on that one and yeah, that's about as good as we can do there. Next... I think it's about time we finally get astrology. Or mining. Or writing. Oh god, the choices are difficult. You know what? We have an okay campus spot right here. And we need the science to get running early. So we're going to go with writing and try and get a campus in St. Petersburg. I think our other city will be right here. And then we won't run right here. So we can also get a farm here, which will add to our housing. And we really have no other use for... Uh, we really have no other use for our builder at the moment. So let's do it. And that didn't get us to the housing level I'd like, but we can deal with it. We got 20 faith from that. Nice. We might get our Pantheon next turn. I really want that faith production early. I want to found the first Pantheon if possible. I want to play a strong religious game. I don't know if we're going to Religious Victory, which is a new victory type, which I'm excited to do. Minor Victory. You know what? I'll let them do that fight. Let them lose their scout. So we can choose our Pantheon. Now, Dance of the Aurora is tempting as Russia. Extra faith from adjacent Tundra tiles. However, we really don't have much Tundra. Adjacent rainforest, that's not really happening. 
So I was looking through this earlier, and I thought that uh, one of the more appealing ones for Russia that might be fun is religious settlements. Border expansion rates increased by 15%. The country's already all about taking tiles quickly. This would give me even more bonuses towards that. So let's just uh, move our units here. Okay, good. We found that. And to remind ourselves, we have a lot of stone. Is there anything here that's stone-related that we might want? Holy site adjacent to a river gives you amenities. That's not horrible. Again, pantheons tend to give you a bonus mostly in the beginning of the game. However, in this game, you never lose your pantheon even if your religion has been taken over. Plus two faith from quarries would be a lot of faith in early game from all these quarries. Assuming I can settle them. That's probably the best idea. However, I'm going to go religious settlements because I want to see how many tiles I can get. So uh, for, for founding that, we have a bonus towards mysticism now. All right, and we can go ahead and get our granary now. So we can get our growth rate in St. Petersburg up as well as our housing capacity because our housing is an issue. Oh, those horses didn't do well. All right, we can, uh, we can almost finish them off. Fortify and heal. So I'll explain that overlay that you just saw there in a moment. Like to the apple, yes. And the Dead Sea shore, all ashes to the taste. There we go. Bonus towards astrology. Exactly what we needed. We found a, we found a uh, natural wonder. There we go. Got some gold as well, which is not bad. And uh, Scout has a promotion, which I'll teach you about next turn, because it has been changed a little bit. We do have a lot of gold, though. And if we purchase with gold, we could actually buy something. It wouldn't actually take us too long to get the gold to buy an extra settler, which is, I think, what I want to save up for. Because, again, I want to rapid expand, and buying settlers would be a very quick way of doing that. And I really want to make sure the Congo don't take my prime city spots. There we go. Oh, and a horse ran through a mountain. There we go. Okay, so we can do a promotion now. So promotion ends your turn, but it also heals you. So we can get faster movement in woods and rainforests or faster movement on hills. Um, I tend to find a lot more forest than hills. At least it feels like it, so I'll take forest. We're true friends with smaller civilizations. We appreciate that you recognize this fact. Okay. That's a hint towards his, uh, his hidden agenda being liking small countries, which means he might not be a lifelong uh, friend of us. Uh, in fact, he might hate our guts. We'll keep that in mind. That was a misclick there. I don't know what happened there. That's frustrating. We might lose our settler. Oh no, he's stupid and attacked our our workers or our warriors instead. We have recently gained advanced knowledge in city planning. Okay. Is easy. All you have to do is cross out the wrong words. Okay. So what's telling us there is we can build districts, which I'll explain as soon as I can make one. So that just delayed us a lot. I think what I'm going to do is go settle this one down here just so we can settle that city quickly. Because we're going to get delayed a lot. And that could have been avoided if I moved my unit to the correct tile. However, that's one thing I've noticed that I hope they fix in this game, actually. Is sometimes the map will move on its own around because it's trying to focus on something. And that will force your unit to go to the wrong tile. Um, that little delay it has before it goes to the next unit is very frustrating. But anyway, found the footprint of Apostle. This is a relic, so it goes straight into our capital there, producing faith and tourism. Relics are unique from artifacts. Artifacts you get later in the game. So I'm happy we got that early. Help get our faith generation early. So let's go astrology so we can start getting the uh, Lavra, which is our unique district. Although we'll probably get a campus first. Actually, we have a farm there now. I don't want a campus there as much as I used to. 
I don't know. I could get rid of the farm. Ah, it's a hard decision. That's annoying. When the, when the camera thinks I doesn't need to come over to show you something. All right, so I didn't explain this before, but this is the lens for settling. Red means you can't settle, it's too close to another city. White means that uh, you can settle a city there, it's fine. The very kind of light green means that you can settle a city and it'll be close to ocean water. And the bright green means you can settle a city and it'll be next to fresh water. Fresh water is the best for population. But we're going to settle right here on the coast. And you can see here, normally you just start with a border that's like this. It's just one tile in every direction from the city. We're Russia, we start with much larger borders, which is very nice. So we're going to have that slinger just fortify in the city and protect it. And they can get started on a monument early, because our culture is really going to fall behind. Uh, our culture is probably some of the worst in the game. Alright, so Rome is proud of us because we have large borders. Because... Uh, People settle too close, so my people will settle where they please. So he's not happy, we basically told him off. Okay, so we're in a weird situation up here. I kinda wanna keep this barbarian horse archer alive, because he keep it keeps the Congo from wanting to go up over there and settle. Um, and I really want to get a settler there and take that spot. So a campus, yeah, the prime spot's right there, and I used it up for a farm because I'm an idiot. Um, and we really do need the food tile right now. We'll probably do a campus there in the future. For now, I'm tempted to go with another settler and spread over here and just mass-produce settlers out of St. Petersburg. And you know what? I think that's actually what I'm going to do. Our amenities will get stretched a little thin early, but our cities will still grow. Which I'm happy with. As long as we have the housing, they'll they'll be able to grow. As long as they have housing and food. So I want to scout around here a little bit, see if there are any prime city locations. And I'm also really keeping an eye on my money, because as soon as we hit uh, 400 gold, I want to buy a settler. A large empire is a wise idea. Okay, so that's where we want the city to be. Now, luckily, returning from Civilization 4 is um, dot mapping through map pins. You can add little pins around the map, click things, and, like, call it city. And that'll tell me that I want a city there later. I'm going to delete it because I don't want a city there. In fact, I, it's way too close to another city to get a, to actually place one. Uh, but you know what I mean. It's nice that that's available. A physician without a knowledge of astrology has no right to call himself a physician. All right, so shrines, Stonehenge, and the law room. Without craftsmanship, inspiration is a mere reed shaken in the wind. Okay. So first of all, we can drop the extra faith in gold in our capital. We kind of got what we wanted out of that. I want the production towards builders. The more builders you make, the more expensive they get, so it's worth it. There we go. So there's a lot of rice down here. A uh, city right here, maybe. It would get us the cotton, which is luxury. It'd be coastal, which is always nice. Actually, no, I could put one right here. Because then I could still make a harbor. I'd get the cotton. I'd have uh, the fresh water here. And I'd have both rice. That'd be worth a lot of food. I have some marshes I can dig up later. You know, right here is a good spot. Let's, let's stop map that. City. Perfect. And right here would also be good. City. And we already know we want one right there. In fact, this is our next priority. So, I've been really dragging my feet on mining, and I think it's about time I get it, so I can work my way to bronze working for some early military. Water mills also wouldn't be bad. It's extra food from rice and wheat, and it gives you food and production itself. It just requires a river. 
Sailing is also very appealing, although until we have celestial navigation, we can't build a proper harbor. And harbors are great, because even if you don't really need the navy, it's extra trade route capacity, which is valuable. So I think I'd really like to get archery as well, because archers are fantastic for a long time. But I think we're going to get mining. Start raising our production soon. So we're going to start getting foreign trade. We haven't discovered a second continent yet. In fact, if we go to our lenses and go to continent, do we really know another one? Hmm. We... Ah, we know that one exists up there, but we haven't discovered it ourselves. Okay. Well, we know the general size of our continent, then. So continents don't just mean land masses in this game. It's kind of more like in real life, where, like, you know, Europe and Asia are the same land mass, but there's kind of a shaky metaphorical border in which one goes to the other that no one's really able to pinpoint. This game kind of runs by that idea. Also, I've been keeping close enough eye on my money here. Inspiration. Growing number of citizens. We have six or more citizens across our country, which means we have a boost towards early empire, which is very useful. And we have a housing problem over here already. It's letting us know that we can only fit one more person, but it's working on a monument right now. After that, I'll have it do a granary. In fact, let's buy our settler right here, because I want to get that spot before they do, and they already have a trade route going to us, so... Uh, they've got a road there Why that we can use. In a hole. Quit digging. Ugh, you know what? A better spot might be right here, just so we can get the fresh water. Let's do that. They're really going to get upset with us forward settling them. But, uh, rightly, I don't care what they think. Not that much, I don't. So, commercial hub and markets, I absolutely adore. But I think it's finally time we get sailing. And we're about to finish another settler back home. Here we go. We can finally get our monument back home, but I think builders are what we need. Again, our culture is really falling behind. Here we go. Moscow has been settled, which was actually the capital in previous games. But, uh, because this game allows you to have different leaders for different civilizations, in which, what I mean is, it's like Civilization 4. There are multiple leaders for multiple civilizations, although, right now, on launch, the only civilization that has multiple leaders is Greece. It has two. Uh, it seems like whatever leader you have... The capital is whatever the capital was in that period of the country's history, which at the time of Peter the Great was St. Petersburg. So, I'm very tempted to go lava early, but I think I actually want the campus. So right here is a prime spot because that's two science for being right there. Right there is also not bad. But if we look at lava, right there is better for that. So I want the campus. So a campus is an actual tile that you improve through building something in the city. You can then build buildings in that district that give you bonuses. So campus is the science one. It itself produces science based on what's around it, but you can also build things like libraries and universities in there. The lava is my holy site. I could be building shrines and temples there. You get the idea. So what you can build in a city is dependent on what districts you have built there, which I think is absolutely fascinating. All right, let's kill this scout. I don't want him sending barbarians at us. And he shouldn't be able to get to my settler if I send him there. By the way, unlike previous games, in this game, if you actually kill an enemy, ooh. That's a hell of a language you got there, buddy. We met Norway. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're going to be a problem, aren't you? Because I want to dominate the naval game, but uh, Norway's got some real advantages on the ocean. It's an honor to meet you. Let's exchange ideas of our capitals. So I believe he likes people who have a strong navy. Last Viking King. Builds a large navy and respects civilizations who follow his lead. 
Does not like civilizations with a weak navy. Okay. So we haven't sent delegations to anyone yet. But it costs us money to do so. I think I want to send delegations to Rome. Okay, he's far away. The gift of gold for this power. If accepted, the recipient will be a bit friendlier and will gain a level of access. Let's do it. A good offer, but I cannot accept. That makes me worried. You know, especially how he taps his hands, his hand on his sword there. How about you? Hey, you like me. See? It's not enough to know his um, agenda, though. We're limited, so we know of alliances, um, government changes, basically the really big diplomatic stuff. And cities founded, which is nice. Okay, so we know a little. Hmm. Yeah, I'd love your delegation. Okay, so we're de we have delegates with each other. Okay, so you're- you want to have a declaration of friendship with me, but you're not willing to take my delegates? Uh... I don't think this guy is much of a backstabber. But we need allies right now with how the Congo is likely going to be our first war. I'll take you as a friend. That might keep the Congo off our backs, knowing that we've got a powerful ally on both sides. We're on one side, they're on the other. It'd be risky for them to attack us. Alright, we have a builder here. So we're gonna send this guy here and create an escort formation. That'll just attach those two units. Um, it's simply to make them easier to move. And the Lavra... Oh, but that's also a good spot for it. Oh, God, kill me. I'm the worst at laying these things out. I'm still so new to the idea. Builder. Mass produce builders. Start Some mass upgrading the country. More, but little boats should keep near shore. That's a good rhyme. Fishing boats and galleys. So fishing boats are actually not their own unit in this game. Um, they're just workers that you embark. Barbarian approach. Yeah, I'm not thrilled about that. So we can't attack there because the river means it would take another turn, but we'll have our guy in place and ready. Okay, I'm trying to work my way up here to find the other continent myself. For our technology here, um, we're not working with any boosts right now. That's unfortunate. So our big choices right now Masonry um, would allow us to harvest stone, which is very appealing right now. Bronze working would reveal iron, which would help us for our early military game. The wheel would get us a watermill and heavy chariots, and I am a fan of heavy chariots. Now, what realistically would we be able to do? Mine a resource? Well, we don't have any resources to mine yet. Um, and I don't know when we're going to get that copper. Uh, I'd really like that copper because that would give us a bonus towards our research on the wheel. Build a quarry? Well, we can't harvest stone yet. Now harvest, it might actually mean remove the stone for a one-time bonus. Because if it, if it, because uh, this is the same thing here about a quarry specifically. I've even built a quarry. If so, let's take that. And uh, we'll get a builder up there and start on the quarries. So our amenities is plus one, plus one, and plus one. So amenities are not a problem right now. We don't need to rush too heavily towards any. Okay. They also have a scout up there. I'm just putting him back in Moscow. <laughs> So we could actually sling him, and that would probably kill him, so I want to do it right now, because killing with a slinger will get us research bonus towards archery. Ah, that wasn't a kill. We'll probably be able to kill him next turn. Okay, hitting exit 
uh, formation forced him to follow the guy. That's that's interesting. Okay. Funny how these things work out. Manch citizens. You know what? I'm fine with you working that because early on I do need the production, even though I'd really like to focus on food more. There we go. Foreign trade that's bonus. That's the positive aspect of trade, I suppose. The world gets stirred up together. Okay, so this unlocked um, plus two gold for every trade route, which we do not want right now, and double production towards classic era naval units, which I don't think I need either. It was worth it, though. New continent discovered. It's worth it because uh, we can get trade routes now. So early empire is very appealing, gets us open borders, colonization, which will get us settlers much faster, which I really want, and reduce cost of purchasing tiles, which we don't really need. But we're going early empire now. We already have the um, inspiration for it, which is a civic version of a Eureka. Okay, but we're not gonna be able to kill him right away. He's gonna keep running. So let's just keep going towards that city spot we want. And we're almost at a good point to end this episode. I, I like it when the first episode goes a little long. So we're going to start building a trader now in St. Petersburg. We could actually use more scouts. But it's not the highest of high priorities. So there's tea over here. Delicious, delicious tea. I could actually go for a cup of tea. Oh, I'm about to end this episode. I'll get myself a cup of tea. Here we go, quarry. Boom. Now we're almost done masonry. And we have a better tile than usual. It's still not amazing, but it's better. Uh, they're not amazing tiles, really. So I believe that just requires a plantation. So we're going to get that incense soon. I'd really like to get that rice. We need more housing here because we're almost out. Now, production here does absolutely suck. <laughs> Why are you working this tile? Work that one. It's better production. It's just better. And the money here doesn't hurt, but I kind of like you just get things up and running faster. So, yeah, go with a tile that gives you production as well. I appreciate that it thinks I need the money, but I really don't need the money. Okay, so we have our first trade route. Now, traders are actually what makes roads in this game. You don't pay road maintenance cost, which I think is good. It was a little silly. I also like that you don't build it with workers, because that also didn't make a whole lot of sense. Because historically, roads just cropped up wherever the traders needed to go back and forth from a lot. So it makes sense that traders would build them. So, internal trade routes will just bring food and production. It's good for getting new cities up and running. Whereas external ones get you other resources. I want to send one to the Congo because it'll get us uh, culture and science because that's Russia's ability. We're behind them in culture and science, so it'll help catch us back up. After you finish a trade route with another country, you'll also get a trade post there, which means it's worth more gold. This also works internally. After you've finished an internal trade route, it'll have a trade post and will start generating money from then on when you trade there. Just, it's never really as much as an um, international trade route. So, international trade route time. To bringing riches to our civilization, this trade route will gradually develop roads between our cities. Roads allow our units to no longer be impaired by the difficult terrain through which they pass. Yeah, roads make us move faster. Also, for getting a trade route there, we boosted towards currency, which is great because commercial hubs are awesome districts. Also, we really needed a road here because all these hills and everything slowed us down. So the trader is done. Uh, I think we finally want the monument in our capital. There we go. We've really brought the production up in uh, Kazan now. It's not amazing or anything, but it's not bad for such a low population city. And I'm actually really happy with the size of our country for this point in the game. In fact, we're about to make it bigger. Novgorod. And we have even more luxuries within our borders. We'll keep you fortified here because it is our farthest out city. Um... 
Rome is probably about to go tell us that they love us to death. And immediately, yeah. Actually, no, we can get an even better one there in the future. I don't want to buy that tile right now, though. Or do I? You know what? We're buying that desert tile. And we're building our first lava. I don't like how long I've spent waiting. Let's get our religion game fully up and running. All right. On the next episode, we continue to expand. We hopefully take another city location over here. And maybe one over here. And then we probably prepare for a war in the Congo. We have really outpaced them like crazy in terms of city production. But hey, that's kind of what you do is Russia. And it'll be even worse once we get colonization and uh, slow down our builders a little bit, speed up the settlers. And we'll probably switch back to builder speed again later to help work the tiles that we spent so long getting. If you want to watch any more of this series, I'll have a link on screen, as well as another link to another series I'm doing right now, which is the multiplayer mode of Hearts of Iron 4 with my good buddy on YouTube, Aldrahill, where we are playing as the Union of Greece and Turkey through World War II. We're super fascist, and uh, it's been pretty wacky. Thank you, buddy, for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.